Um, you didn't go mad on period details, which I kind of liked. Um, what was the sort of thinking behind that? Well, it would have been very easy, and this was again Owen's sort of, Owen was quite clear on this at the outset, it would have been very easy to have more news footage in it and uh, then the characters referring to, oh, something that's happening. And it, it, say, it's easy to do that in a way, you know? Mm. But the way we kept it, there's a couple of little nods to when it is. But, you know, it, it could almost have been set now because the, you know, the dynamics of the characters we're dealing with, that ambition and greed and ruthlessness are, you know, eternal topics, you know? Mm. So, and also, yeah, if we'd made a sort of 97 documentary feel, I don't know how well it would have engaged a younger audience. And I've, we've had a, the most the best response I've had in the movie actually has been from people 18 to sort of 25 who kind of obviously had no memory of the time, you know? We also, it also, we wanted to make something that, was that had a stylized feel to it. And I think that you can, you can turn sort of like period things into sort of antique shops if you're not careful. And it becomes clutter. And it's such a dialogue piece. It's the dialogue's the action in it. And so what we wanted to do is make actually a very sharp looking film because that had the personality of Stell Fox. And then within that, you just subtly layer in the 90s. And it's and by, by the time the soundtrack's there and the little little costume details and the little bits on the desk and the odd phone that you recognise, mm. you're, you're happily there. You don't need to be sort of thwacked over the head with it. Mm. Another thing that was interesting is um, your, you know, 97, a height of Britpop, mm. Oasis, Blur, Pulp, mm. that's all the people seem to be talking about now when they're looking back. Mm. But in the film, you're trying to sign a girl band and a novelty almost dance record. Mm. Is that what it was like? Is, it, is this sort of cultural revisionism that we all just only think about Britpop? No, it was, I mean, if you look back at the period of detail, you have labels like, say, XL, which is now known for Adele, was like a huge dance label at mm. the time, the Prodigy, probably the biggest act, but they signed loads of those sort of one-off Euro dance records. And you also had, you know, not only... Spice you know, Girls. Spice Girls all saying Sugar Babes, you know. Yeah. Uh, the... Uh, and, uh, if you work at a commercial, which I did work at a major commercial driven, commercially driven label, you're trying to say you don't care, as he says in the film, you don't care where it comes from, you know? There was a huge pressure on sort of 95, 96 to sign guitar groups because everybody was looking at Oasis and going, we, we need to have one of them, you know? But um, to the degree we didn't care where it came from, you know? Also, Britpop, we all think of Oasis and Blur, but actually there was the, the Spice Girls, you know, you had Jerry Halliwell marching around in a union jack skirt. Mm -hmm. It was all about a confidence and this arrogance and this attitude that was, you know, that's obviously summed up by the Gallaghers and that also that, that mood. And cocaine. But, <laughs> and cocaine, yeah, but it, but, and, but it was, it's, uh, it, it was pop, it was British pop music at that time. Mm -hmm. It was sort of like Cool Britannia Rules the Waves sort of feel to it. So it was, it was pop music and this sort of indie band sort of. Yeah, I mean, the, yeah. it was this huge crest yeah. of um, enthusiasm, say, in 94, that became arrogance by mm -hmm. 97, mm -hmm. which kind of, you know, cocaine will do that to you. <laughs> <laughs>